going, everybody? This is Shay coming back at y'all with another episode of the Emmaus Proposition. Man, so happy to be with y'all, man. Uh, even in the midst of, of trial and tribulation and everything that Satan tries to throw at me in this life, me and my family. Uh, man, this has been a blessing. This this has been really cool to be able to talk about Jesus in a way that's um, like refreshing for me and fun for me. And just even in my own mind, <clears throat> train myself that everything I think about ultimately leads back to Christ. It's been it's been so cool. It's it's uh, it's been awesome uh, seeing folks coming over from YouTube, checking me out. Uh, checking out the message, man. That's that's crazy, uh, man. Thanks to y'all, in just in just a month or two, uh, being up to like 50 subscribers, man. That's that's wild to me, and it's and it's so cool that folks are checking out the message. Uh, and then over on on Anchor, uh, I'm up to like 127 listens. That's the the podcast version for you. For those of y'all listening on Anchor, thank you so much, man. Um, I haven't looked over on Apple and Google and uh, and Spotify yet, but thank y'all for checking this out, man. Thank thank y'all for for hearing me out, listening to the story. Hopefully, y'all been blessed by it, because uh, I've been blessed by getting a chance to put my voice out there, pointing people back to Jesus. Like this, this is what we do, and uh, and I'm digging it, and I love it. And so, thank y'all, thank y'all for being with me. Uh, as you can see from the description, <clears throat> today we're going to talk about this nasty little virus that's going around, <laughs> this COVID thing, right? And um, man, it's been crazy. So I'm in the military, and for a lot of for a lot of the country, this whole COVID thing it kind of went away for a while. Like people were. Um, getting vaccinated they they were kind of moving on with their lives things were things were kind of moving and shaking and, and people were getting back to normal right but for folks in the military this this thing has never really gone away and um, they have uh, mandated the vaccination even though uh, people were still getting sick people were still transmitting the virus and all this other kind of stuff um, they were still mandating that people go out and get vaccinated. And so there's a lot of folks that they were looking at it. They were looking at their own health and they uh, put in for a medical exemption and the military super limited the folks that could, that could claim a medical exemption. And to people's surprise, like there were some folks that had like notes from their doctors and stuff like that. And the military is like, no, it's, it's very limited in scope and what you can ask for an exemption for medically. And so, you know, they were disappointed in that. There's some people that just said no. <laughs> it's just like, no, thank you. Like, we we see it. We don't want it. We'd rather take our chances. And the military said, well, thank you for your service. And, and they got booted, man. There's other folks, like, like the process I'm going through, that said, we have some religious qualms about this whole thing. And I have to be honest, man, like when this, when this stuff first popped up, I was looking through the scriptures and I'm thinking about it. And I'm like, there's no way I don't, I don't, I don't see how anybody could say they have a religious basis for not receiving the vaccination. And so as folks were talking to me about it, I'm like, Hey man, like you can, you can try it, but I don't see it in the scriptures. And then I went to go look for myself, and I started to study the word, and, and I'm listening to uh, some of the airmen stories, and really kind of wanting to be a Berean and, and figure out the word for myself, right? And so I'm digging through the scriptures, and lo and behold, man, Spirit of God got a hold of me and was like, I don't want you to get this vaccination. I actually want you to go through the religious exemption process. And man, I, I have to say, this last year or so has been brutal. It's been it's been it's been a brutal time in my life and my family's life. Um, and there's been so many sleepless nights. There's been there's been so much 
um, feelings of like rejection and it made to feel like I'm crazy and, and, and unwanted and less than in so many different ways. It's, it's been absolutely wild and, and fulfilling at the same time. So there's a lot of aspects of it where I just, I felt closer to God through the process, man. Like, what does it feel like to, to trust in God, regardless of what situation comes your way? So <clears throat> going through all that process and, and feeling it out and wonder what's going to happen. It's, it's just been, it's been a wild, it's been a wild year. And, uh, I put in for, uh, the religious exemption and it took a long time for them to come back with an answer. But, uh, here just the other day, they came back and, and gave a, a denial to my initial request. Right. And I, I had been praying the whole time. Like there's gotta be, <laughs> there's gotta be some kind of mechanism where, um, people's voices can be heard in in the religious way, like the mechanism for people to express their, their religious views according to the constitution. Right. And, um, cause that's my charter as a chaplain. Like that's, that's what I'm being asked to do. I'm being asked to help people that, that, that want to serve in the military. They want to serve their country with distinction and honor and accommodation. And they have these religious views that, they they have to abide by both. Like there's no there's no winning out for a person that says I I need to honor God, um, and I don't want to have to choose between the military and and the command decisions that are made there, and my and my relationship with God because ultimately God has to be priority in my life, and so there's a lot of people that. They tried to stand up and say that, and they tried to raise their hand and um, and and have these religious convictions while still maintaining this oath to support and defend the Constitution, right? And so that's what the religious accommodation process is supposed to be. Um, that's that's what I put in for. I wrote, man, I wrote like a long, like four or five page letter. Not including attachments, because I, I went through and had like three pages of scripture to where I was pointing people to. And, man, I was adding everything from the story of um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, where the government made this edict that they just, they just disagreed with. And the story goes... Um, the, the children of Israel are in captivity in Babylon, and the king of Babylon makes this law that says every time a horn is blown, everybody in the city has to take a knee to pay homage to uh, the king of Babylon, right? And these three boys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're in the city, and they, they hear the edict from the king. They hear this government mandate. And they say, we, we can't. We can't do that. And so sure enough, the trumpets blow, the whole city bows down. And, and keep in mind, like, they were, the story goes, they were the only three that stood up and said we can't. There were hundreds of thousands of, of, of Jews and Israelites that were in the city that they did. They, they said, we don't see a problem with that. And so they took a knee when when the trumpet blew, whether it was because they were afraid of the government or because they didn't see it as a big deal. Like, what's the big deal? You're just taking a knee. It's not like I'm, I'm switching religions or anything. Maybe they had that thought. Uh, maybe they had the thought where there's like social pressure, where um, all my neighbors are doing it. So why why shouldn't I just do it? There's, like I said, there was some that just, it was out of fear. Like they were just afraid of what might happen. But not these three boys. These three, these three boys were like, man, even if you were to throw us into a fire pit, we couldn't. 
even if God didn't save us from the fire pit, we could like we we are willing to put our lives on the line in order to make sure that we're honoring God with our life. And man, I look at that right. <laughs> oh my gosh, these boys were unwilling to take a knee when a trumpet was blown. And I looked at that, and I looked at what was happening in this day and age, and I'm like, well. Now we're being asked to receive this this drug, this this medical treatment that's way more serious than taking a knee. And these boys, they were willing to be thrown in a fire over taking a knee. And so I just got I just got super convicted, right? I was reading that story and I got super convicted. Same with Daniel. The book of Daniel. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego is in Daniel. Also in the book of Daniel is Daniel. <laughs> and Daniel, they tell him, you, know, you can't pray. And he's like, I, I have to, man. Like, I, I, can't, I can't not have this relationship with God. And so sure enough, the king makes this, this law that says, uh, anyone who prays to any God other than me, because... Uh, the, the Babylonians considered their king almost like a, a, a like a god king kind of thing. Anybody who takes a knee to to any god other than me is going to be tossed into a den of lions. And Daniel's like, dude, I can't, I can't not pray. I have to, I have to honor God with my life, even if, even if you do throw me in the lion's den. I have to honor God. And that's our prodigy, right? Like that's the that's the ancestry that Christians come from. And I think about the fishermen laying down their lives, laying down their livelihood just to follow Jesus. Jesus says, Come follow me, and they drop their nets and they just follow him. I think about all these stories throughout the Bible, all these prophets, all these kings that were commissioned by God to follow him. And he, he demanded their followership. Like God God has to be the ultimate ruling authority. And so I'm pouring through the Bible and I'm seeing all this stuff. And I'm getting super convicted. And, um, and I'm seeing stuff like, don't be conformed any longer to the image of this world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I'm seeing stuff like, um, whatever you do, whether you eat, drink, or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. And uh, I'm looking in the book of, of Revelation as it's talking about the beast coming on the scene and how how coercive the beast is in, in getting people to follow him. And so much to the point where people have to have a, a special uh, designation either on their hands or their foreheads to buy or sell, even to go to the grocery store. They got, they got to have this thing. I'm just like, oh, man. This is so much. And so I I bounced some ideas off of some Christian buddies of mine and, and they were like and, and listening to some other like pastors that were that were going around at the time and and I'm listening to people and they're like, Well, I don't think this is the, the mark of the beast or anything. Like I think you're taking that thought too far. Or or I would hear some pastors they would be preaching sermons and they would say stuff like, of course you have to get vaccinated. This is the best way to love your neighbor. And I'm like, whoa, that's, um, that's a little intense. <laughs> One, <laughs> two, like that's, that's way too simplistic. Like there's, there's some nuance with following Jesus where, um, if I did have the thought, that this thing was the mark of the beast. Look how easy it was to get people to bend the knee to a government system. We got Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego as examples. And look how easy it was for the church to turn on other church members, for the government to turn on its people. Um, we saw early in, the, uh, early in the pandemic, there was this video Y'all probably remember from back in the day, those of y'all that are 90s kids that was that was dancing in the 90s. 
Um, I remember Juvenile came out with Back That Thing Up. And <laughs> it was a hit back in the 90s, man. We, we were out dancing. Anyway, uh, they had Manny Fresh and Juvenile come back up come back out with Vax that thing up. And they had the girls in the video talking about uh, you can't you can't get with me unless you've been vaccinated and all this stuff. I'm like, yo, this this is too much. I heard I listened to pastors pastors that were like uh, we gotta get people vaccinated with this thing. It was before we even understood what it was. I heard I was on a call with this local group of of black pastors in the community, and they were like, "Yeah, we're gonna hold a uh, we're gonna hold like an event down here at the church where we're gonna have tents set up and all kind of stuff, and we're gonna get people vaccinated." And it just didn't it didn't sit right with me, man. It really didn't because I got this conviction from God that He didn't want me to do it. But then I got people that are like using and sometimes misusing biblical scripture to try to justify their point. And uh, and I thought to myself, like, man, if it came down to it and this was the mark, it is, it is, it is easy. If it's not the mark, this is definitely a precursor. This is like a, yes, this is probably a slippery slope fallacy, but it is going to be easy for the beast to come in and say, uh, I am doing this for your health and safety. I am, uh, like there's going to be food shortages and they're going to be able to say, um, we're doing this to protect everyone. And so we need you to get this mark so we make sure you belong on the right team. Oh my gosh. And that's what this thing has turned into, man. It's turned into like a complete us against them kind of thing. And I expressed that in my in my original letter, how um, I have these convictions, I've, I've been speaking to God, God has uh, poured this on me, uh, I can see by the way the enemy is, is coercing people into getting it, man, they were giving away lotteries for people, they were giving away hundreds of thousands of dollars just to keep people vaccinated, to no charge, like any, I, I think I learned this early on, ain't nothing free, Every, anything that somebody says is free, it's usually got some kind of string behind it, and they were and they doing this thing for free and 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 not only free but they're giving away money. I'm like, man, no, this there's there's just, there's too much stuff, man. And uh, I had some family members that were like, um, I just don't see how this could ever be a worldwide uh, conspiracy. Like everybody's in on it, and I'm thinking in my mind, yeah, but but scripture. Scripture says that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. This is this is one mind behind this thing. It's not like there's not like there's not spiritual forces that are at play behind all this. Anything that doesn't point to God, anything that doesn't prop up Christ is not of God. And this thing was like trust the science and uh, just do it because we told you to and all this other kind of stuff. Right. And I, and I was saying in my letter, like you, you're asking me to convert to scientism. You're, you're asking me to trust in science for, for my complete thought process. Like that's a, that's a philosophical worldview that you're test, telling me to trust science. Science says question everything. True science says question everything. So you get to the end of a conclusion, you, you, you repeat it, and the repeatability leads you to more questions where you just keep questioning things over and over and over. There's there's never a, a trust the science and you come to an ultimate conclusion. That's not science. A science ism. And so I, I told them on my letter, like, you're asking me, a Christian chaplain, somebody who's in the in the military <laughs> as a Christian, to switch religions. There's a whole process for that. One, there's a whole process for that. Two, no thank you. I, I have my worldview. I have my, my faith and trust in Christ. I have everything I need to live a righteous life. I don't need somebody coming through and telling me that uh, I need to trust in science over trusting God. I remember at one point 
we were looking through YouTube and some other places. YouTube banned because um, people were on YouTube when when the the COVID virus first came out, and they were saying you need to pray, pray for God to heal you, and people were getting banned from YouTube for telling people to pray. They said that's not a that's not a, a uh, that's not a real solution to this COVID thing. So all my alarms are going off. They're just, they're just rapid fire, right? Anytime anybody says trust in something else other than God, your red flags should be going up. And they, man, my my five thousand alarms were going off. And so, like I said, I put in uh, the request. It came back denied. All the while, I've been trying to. Uh, encourage people because they were getting back their letters. Mine took a really long time to come back. Um, and in the meantime, I'm, I'm asking folks like, hey, what, what do you think? Like, have you asked God whether or not you should get the virus or did you just succumb to political and social pressure to get it? Or, or maybe your job was demanding it and you didn't want to have to go through the process of of putting in for a religious exemption. Maybe maybe your job said you, there will be no religious exemptions and you didn't even try. And so you just, I need this job, I need to feed my family, and so I've got, I got to do this thing. Um, so I was asking folks if, if that was their case, if they, had, if they had asked God. And a lot of folks didn't, man. A lot of folks didn't convey or conversate with God on whether or not they should get... Um, this this medical treatment. I don't. I can't call it a vaccination with good conscience, man. It's it's not preventing anything, and it's not it's not really helping. Um. And they were like, no, like we we just we got it because we need this job, and my job said I need to get it, and so I got it. People in the military, they did the same thing. They're like, oh, we're out here at the base. I've gotten shot up with everything else. I've been a I've been a lab rat for the government up to this point. I might as well just get another shot. It's not a big deal. And man, there's there's a problem with that, right? Anytime, anytime a Christian person just goes along with culture, um, we should we should consider ourselves in deadly water. Because we don't belong to this kingdom. We don't we don't belong to this world. We're we're of we have a different citizenship for those who are in Christ. And that citizenship is not a democracy it's a theocracy it's a it's a kingdom um, that means we need the king's permission for everything we do we need we need God's direction for every act we make we are we are ambassadors in a foreign land we're like we're we're here as aliens and so there was a lot of folks that didn't check in with their king there's a lot of folks that didn't conversate with God about it there's I'm sure there's plenty that did and I was telling folks that. I'm like, I, it's not that I'm trying to lean in on you like God doesn't want you to get it. It's more that I just want you to I want you to ask God whether or not you should get it. Because God might say, yes, I want you to get it. Because he wants people on that side of the conversation to say, this isn't something to fear. God has ordered our days. Uh, God is not going to allow something to hurt us that he doesn't want to take us out. Like if, if God wanted to use COVID to take us home, he would have took us home. If God wants to use the vaccine, the vaccine in, in, in air quotes, if he wants to use the vaccine to take us home, he's going to take us home. If God wants to use us choking on our own air <laughs> in the next breath, he's going to take us home. There's nothing that's going to thwart the plans of God. So you need God, God, wants people on that side of the conversation to say to people, don't fear this thing. On the other hand, God is going to tell people, no, I don't want you to get it. I, I need people on the other side of that conversation because that message of don't fear is for the other side too. Don't fear what your job is going to do. I'm going to take care of you. Don't fear a government edict. You, but even if even if I don't save you, still I want you to trust me. I still don't want you to fear. Think about Daniel and him. And he needs like so he needs people on both sides of the conversation. And so that was that was my advice to almost everybody I came in contact with was ask God. Ask God what he wants you to do. 
And a lot of people did, and a lot of folks came back and said, thank you for reminding me uh, to ask God about this. Like I, I would have just gone along, and regardless of the decision they made, I just want people to, I just want people to interact with Jesus about it. That's, that's, that's just where I'm at, right? Um, and so they did, um, some folks got the, some folks got the shot. A lot of folks didn't. They asked for a, a religious accommodation. Military is saying no left and right. Like, and as a chaplain, y'all, it's, it's crazy because there is, uh, there's this thing. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. There's this thing called the Constitution, right? And I'm thinking back to that, how the how the Constitution was originally written, how the country was originally formed. And there were people that came here to escape a government that was trying to tell them how they should worship. And so they came and they formulated America. And right at the very beginning, they said, we want religious freedom. We don't want to belong. At the time, it was they were running away from the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church and, and the government were, were too heavily involved with each other. They were like, we want, we want freedom from that. The, the Protestant Reformation was happening at the time. They were like, we, we, want to, we want to do this relationship with God in our own way. And that's at the, that's at the very foundation of who we are. Even in the military, our, our oath that we take when we raise our right hand, right? When we're first when we're first joining up, it says I will support and defend the Constitution against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And so it's right there. There's regulations written around the protection of religious freedom. There's the Constitution itself that we're supposed to be supporting and defending. When we go to spread democracy around the world, we we point to our Constitution and say, "Look how great it is." And the irony. And the, the hypocrisy is, right now, we're not following it ourselves. So it's struggle bus. It's struggle bus because, um, yeah, I still feel like this is my calling to be a chaplain. And I still feel like God has more work for me to do. But on the other side, I got some, some really good advice from a friend. He was saying... Um, You've done you've done a great job. Maybe God is calling you to something else. Maybe, maybe God is closing a door here so that he can open a door elsewhere. And he may not show you what door he's about to open. He just wants you to trust that he's going to open one. And I'm like, oh, man. Oh, man, that, that feels like a fiery furnace to me. You're asking me to step in a fiery furnace. You're asking me to step in with the thought that God may not rescue me. Um, and it requires faith, man. And here's what I've learned about God during this season. And here's my proposition. Though the vaccination may not be your, your thing, God is going to reveal to every believer the depth of their faith. Uh, this, this vaccination thing may not, may not have been it for you. This may not have been the test that God wanted to put you through. Like I said, God wanted people on both sides. And so, Maybe, maybe this wasn't it for you. Maybe you just were like, oh, it's not a big deal. I'll just get it. I've got elderly parents uh, that, that they're telling me this isn't going to put them at risk. I'm going to be at risk if I expose them to COVID. Like, there's all this stuff, right? Maybe it wasn't your test. But you won't be a Christian for too long without God showing you where your faith is. And here's, here's an example of what I mean by that. Um, so when Jesus was rolling and um, he, had, he had his 12 disciples, and two of them had a really similar story, and it's Peter and Judas. And so God called both of them. They rolled tight with Jesus for three years. Like they were, they were roll homies, right? Uh, not really sleeping in nobody's house. They probably out chilling. Uh, got got rocks as their pillows. They having fish fries out on the beach. Um, they they they're just chilling for for three years. They rolling tight, right? And Jesus comes to the end of his life, and they're sitting at the Last Supper, and 
Jesus dismisses Judas to go and betray him. And so Judas goes and does his thing. And then Peter is like, um, you know what, dog? I got your back. Like, thicker thin, thicker thin, like me and you are ride or die. Like, I got you. Don't even worry about it, right? And <laughs> Jesus looks at Peter and said, man, before the sun comes up and the rooster crows, you're going to deny me like three times. And, and Peter's like, man, say what now? I would, man, you crazy, dog. I got you. Jesus like, man, don't even worry about it. I got you. And um, sure enough, uh, that night, Jesus goes to pray in the garden. Uh, he gets arrested. He gets put on a, on a farce trial. And um, Peter is following from a distance, right? He, try, he tries to... He tries to to pull out some chops like he he thought he was big shot like he he pulls out a knife on somebody and like wow wipe somebody's ear off Jesus puts it back on is like yo man chill out man because because in the back of his mind he's like Pete man I know who you are dog come on man quit tripping and so Jesus is on trial in the middle of the night um, Peter is following from a distance. And people start asking him, yo, ain't you, old boy, that's that's rolling with that Jesus cat? And he's like, nah, man, I don't know what you're talking about. And they're like, nah, 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 I, I recognize you, right? You even got the accent, right? So you got to be that dude. He's like, man, y'all tripping. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know no Jesus. And then this little girl says, no, I've seen you rolling with Jesus. He's like, I've never even met the man. Immediately, a rooster crows. And Jesus, and Peter is like, Man, I'd have messed up. He told me. He told me. This is this is Peter's test of faith right here, right? He's denied Jesus. He's been his faith has been revealed. When things got tough for Peter, and when things get tough for a lot of us, it's it's hard for us to follow Christ. Peter could have spoke up. And say, yeah, I'm rolling with Jesus. What you want to do about it? And they would have put him on trial too and probably would have crucified him too. And he probably had that in his mind as he's like, no, I don't, I don't even know who this Jesus cat is. And a lot of us do that. I found, I found myself kind of falling into almost some of that as I'm going through this process. Like, I'm, like on one side, I want to, I want to stay in. And I tell myself it's so I can continue on with ministry, right? But if I'm honest with myself, it's it's got to do with some money, and it's got to do with some some retirement benefits, and I don't want to. I, I I'm I'm like holding it close fist because I don't want to give it up. And my thought is, what if Jesus wants me to give it up? What if, what if He doesn't want me to hold on to it so tightly? So like Peter, my, my faith is on trial and uh, it's being exposed because on one side, I, I want to stay in for those reasons. But on the other side, like if I get out, um, like if, if I stay in, I'm going to have this guilt that I took, I took this, this, uh, this medical treatment, even though I didn't want to, and I have. I have I have essentially broken God's heart because I didn't I didn't put him first you know what I mean so that's if I stay in right I, I I have this this guilt in the back of my mind that if I stay in that's what I'm gonna be suffering through and if I get out there's there's so many people that I've been able to reach through this military thing like there's been people that I've been able to bring to Christ and and leaving them as a um, as, as a shepherd, it doesn't, it doesn't feel right. And I've got people that are like, um, if, if you, if you leave, um, we don't know who else we can trust. I'm like, dang, dude, that's tough. That's, it's, it's tough. And it's, 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 it's not, it's not been easy, man. I've got, I've got leadership that's like, we, we know you. We've known you for a long time. We want you here. We need you here. We have all these plans for you, and but we but we need you to be here to do it. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So it's it's been rough, right? 
and my faith is on trial, just like Peter's was. <sighs> Judas. Judas was a dude that was always kind of, you know that dude that that you hang out with that's always got like a shady side to him. Like he always got some kind of scheme going on or always trying to always trying to get over on people or something like that. That was kind of Judas. Judas was always like skimming some off the top. Like he was the he was the treasurer of the group, right? He was always scheming and trying to get some off the top. And and so when he when he sees an opportunity to make some money for turning in Jesus, like he takes it. And so Jesus releases him to go and betray him. He goes to the people that are trying to kill Jesus, and he says, um, I'll take you to him. I just need that money. And they give him the money, and he takes them right to Jesus. And so this this is this is Judas's test, right? This is this is his test of faith. When we've made a mistake, it, actually this is Peter and Judas's mistake. This this is where the, the two stories converge and diverge at the same time. When we when we have this test of faith, what are we going to do? Are we going to trust our own fears, trust our own ways of doing life, or are we going to trust in Christ? Peter, when he's faced with this and he goes, he's hiding out. Y'all excuse the dog. My dog just walked through for those who are listening. <laughs> um, when Peter is faced with this 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 trial of faith, he goes into hiding. But then when Jesus resurrects and he comes to him, he immediately clings to Jesus. He immediately says, I need your I need your forgiveness. I need your grace. And the way he says it, like he's he's sitting before Jesus and Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? And and Peter says, Of course I love you. He said, Well, feed my sheep. He asked him three times for the three times that that Peter denied Christ. Jesus asked him three times, but yeah, but do you love me? I, I know that you ran into some stuff and your 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 faith wasn't there. I get it. I know your frame. I know I know who you are. I'm the one who created you. Of course I know who you are. But do you love me? And if you love me, will you feed my sheep? And so Peter says, yes. And and uh, Peter goes on to have this life where uh, a lot in the Catholic faith consider him as the first pope in Rome. But he has this life of faith that, because he was willing to honor God even after making a mistake. Judas, Judas on the other hand, Judas takes this, this trial of, am I going to trust in Jesus or not? When he betrayed Jesus uh, and he realizes his mistake, he tries to go back to the Pharisees and say, yo, y'all take this money back, man. I can't, I can't have Jesus' blood on my hand. Like, I made a mistake. Um, I don't want this anymore. And they were like, we don't want that blood money. That's on you. And so he tosses it in the middle of the street thinking that and I'm sorry in the middle of the of the floor thinking that's what's gonna actually like redeem him right goes out from there and commits suicide Judas trusted his self you can see how selfish he was because he was always scheming trusted himself and when that didn't measure up he had nothing else to rely on and his hope was gone And it's my, it's my thought with all that. Every believer is going to face some kind of trial of faith. God is going to put some kind of scenario in front of you. And he's going to ask you the question, do you trust me more than you trust that thing? Do you trust me more than you trust yourself? Do you trust me more than you trust your money or your power or your prestige? Am I the top dog in your life? Or is that other thing the top dog in your life? Every believer is going to go through it. Like I said, if COVID wasn't your thing, your thing is coming. And uh, and if it doesn't come, man, I, I, I feel sorry for you because I don't know if you belong to Christ. It's one of those things where 
God has to refine his people. Um, there's, this, there's this imagery that me and my wife heard in a sermon once where uh, they were talking about God refining us and, and they equated it to a bar of silver or, or ore, silver ore, right? And the thought was a smelter puts the ore into the fire, like in a cup or something like that. They heat it up and it melts down the ore and the liquid uh, silver settles at the bottom and what rises to the top is all the all the dirt and grime from the silver being in the rock. So the refiner puts it in, the stuff melts down, all the impurities come up, he wipes it off, wipes off all the impurities off the top, and then he sticks the the fire, sticks the silver back in the fire and reheats it. And same thing. The, the silver settles, all the impurities come to the top, he wipes it off, sticks it right back in. And he does this over and over and over. And um, the, the sermon equated that to the way God refines us. There's always some kind of test or trial where God is like, I need to perfect your faith. I'm, I'm the author and perfecter of your faith. I, I need to refine it. I, I, need to, I need to show you where I rank. And so... God will place these things in front of us. Maybe it's, maybe it's your job that God is like, I need to show you that you're actually idolizing your job. And he'll, and he'll stick you in that fire. And he'll show you, look, this is a false idol for you. And through his grace, sometimes he takes the idol away. Like I've, I've heard of people that are like, yeah, I was, I was getting so wrapped up in my job. And I prayed, I was praying for God you know, for me to get closer to God and all these things. And God, God took my job away. And it showed me how much of an idol my job had become. Um, maybe it's money. And God shows you, like, your love of money is actually becoming an idol. And God rips that money away. And some people freak out and they're like, woe is me and all this other stuff. But for those who believe, God is like, I just, I want you, I want, I want you to see it. So you know that I love you and I don't want you to, to burn in hell because you've got this false idol. It could be a relationship. It could be absolutely anything. One theologian, one old school theologian said the, the heart is an idol factory. We're always trying to make up a new idol. It's, it's, I think it's why it's the first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. Is because God knows our heart is always trying to make an idol out of something. We we would much rather reprioritize God as not the top dog because it takes sacrifice, man. Eventually, God is going to ask you to do something that does not feel good. But he does it for his glory and for your benefit. And man, that's a hard pill to swallow. It's a, it's a hard pill for me to swallow right now going through this process because I'm wondering, like, is God asking me to, to fall short of a 20-year career? And I am close. I'm, I'm so close I could sneeze at it. Y'all don't, don't understand, like, I've worked hard to be in this place, man. I've endured a lot of stuff over the years. I got some, I got some PTSD from some stuff that I've seen during my course in the military that I don't know when it's going to present itself. But I know it's sitting there. I can feel it. And to be a, to be a stone's throw away from it, and God says, "Yeah, but I don't want you to have that. I want to I want to give you something different." Whew. It's a, it's a it's a tough pill to swallow, man. But I gotta remember, and it and it's a hard lesson. It's 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 a really hard lesson. God is operating. For his glory and our benefit. Like we we get a chance to share in the glory of God. It's a hard thing to remember, but it's right there. And uh, Christ says, uh, I love you and I'm with you. I'll never leave you or forsake you. But I need you to follow me. And, and, I, and I imagine, man, that's what... The disciples were feeling as, you know, Jesus dies, the government's hunting them down. 
Uh, they're, they're having to try to get away, and they're huddled upstairs in an upstairs room, and the, and the Spirit of God, like, comes through and just rushes on everybody, so much so that, like, flames are, are dancing on their heads, right? And they just bust out in the streets, like, we don't care what y'all do to us, man. Christ is alive. Jesus has come alive. Death could not hold him. Y'all tried to kill him, but y'all can't hold God. Death, you can, death can't defeat God. Jesus holds the keys to death. He's mastery over all. He's Lord of everything. Praise him. They're on the streets. The very, <laughs> the very previous day, they were worried about being killed by the government. The next day, they're out in the streets preaching the good news. Like, it's, it's crazy, man. Faith is tough. Whoever said being a Christian was easy is full of malarkey. I'll, I'll say that. <laughs> That's an old word. I don't know why I just said that. <clears throat> but God is good. And um, regardless of what happens, um, we'll continue to glorify God. Uh, in the Old Testament, they would relate um, the prophets to like watchmen on a tower. And a watchman on a tower, when they saw an enemy coming, it was their job to warn the city that the enemy was coming and to prepare. And, man, that's what I feel like right now. I, I feel like a watchman on a tower that's screaming out, y'all made this too easy. This this COVID thing exposed a lot. Y'all made it entirely too easy. Only thing a government has to do is threaten safety, threaten a job, um, threaten livelihood in, in different ways, and people will cave. Like you tell you tell parents that their kids can't go to school and they're like, Oh, we'll do whatever you want. <laughs> you tell people they can't uh there was a lot of people that they're like fitness nuts and the government was like, Y'all can't y'all can't go to the gym no more and people were like, I'll get whatever shot you want me to, just let me go back to the gym. It was easy, man. And churches. Oh my goodness. There was a lot of churches churches that just they just stopped meeting. Even though the Bible says, don't forsake the fellowship of the saints. Even though the Bible would command elders, if someone is sick, bring the sick person to the elders so that they can pray over them and lay their hands on them and anoint them with oil. It, it never says, if a person is sick, tell them to stay at home. It never says that. It said, if a person is sick, bring them to the elders. And you had churches where their elders were like, if y'all are sick, stay home. Because we need, because we still need to idolize this worship service. Yo, even our worship services became an idol in all this. Because the true worship of God is not the building. The, the, the church is not the building. The church is the people. You're telling the church not to come to church. What, what kind of sense does that make? It's, it's, it's Looney Tunes. It's Looney Tunes. And um, I'm, I'm thinking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm thinking about Daniel. I'm thinking about the Christians that got fed to lions in Colosseums. I'm thinking about brothers and sisters in Africa and China and South America that when they proclaim their faith in Christ, they risk actual execution. And we get told, um, if you don't, get this thing, this this medical treatment, you're not going to be able to, um, you're not going to be able to go to the grocery store. And people will fold it. Christians and non-Christians are like folded quick. And it's disturbing, man. I, I'm the watchman on the tower that's trying to scream out to people, we made it too easy. If things unfold within our lifetime, I would not be surprised because we made it hyper simple. Christians Christians are supposed to be the ones that are trusting in God. Even if even if we're called kooks, even if we're called crazy, even if it doesn't make sense. God uses the foolish things, uh, our foolish things, to shame the wisdom of this world. God uses the foolish to shame the wise. Why why would we not 
be willing to be called uh, whatever name you could throw at us. We have Christ. He's the Lord of all. It's tough. And so I'm going to wrap this up, man. That's my proposition. That even though the vaccination may not be your thing, something's coming for you. And my prayer is that um, you will you'll see it, that you'll trust in Christ throughout the process. Um, I guarantee as Jesus was walking down the Emmaus Road and he's talking to the two disciples, uh, he was explaining to them the stories of like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And how the point the whole time was, I, I want you to trust me. I want you to I want you to trust in me with everything you have. I don't want I don't want you to hold back anything from me. And that's my prayer for y'all. Uh, that's my prayer for myself. Because there's days where I wake up where <laughs> I don't have as much strength as I want to have. And uh and I'm and I'm close to caving, and I cry out for God. God, I, I need your protection, and and He'll send my wife to give me a good word. Like, no, we we're gonna trust in Christ, and it's gonna be okay. Or He'll send um, He'll send somebody else's story where it's just like, no, trust in Jesus. Or He'll just show me the hypocrisy that's going on with this thing. And, and that's not even on, on the Jesus side. The hypocrisy that's going on with this stuff where you could tell there's just something nasty and demonic about it. Why would I pursue something that had demonic intentions behind it? A house divided can't stand. We, we, can't, we can't serve both God and other things. God, God will not have it. Jesus has to be supreme. Anyway. So glad y'all tuned in to the Emmaus proposition. Hopefully, um, hopefully I didn't uh, offend anyone because I honestly think there's going to be people on both sides of that conversation. But I, I think this is where God has me. He has hundreds, thousands of other people in the same spot. Um, I'm praying for all the folks that are going through this thing that are in the service still. A lot of a lot of them have gotten kicked out because of this thing. A lot of them are holding on for dear life. There's a lot of lawsuits that are happening where people are, are trying to fight this thing from within the system. And there's people that are just saying, I, I just I would rather rely on Christ than rely on what you're trying to give me. And for that, man, I if there was a way for me to do a thousand hand salute, I would I would give you one. But what I'll give you instead is my prayers. I'll give you all my love. Because had not God had not God put me through the same situation, I wouldn't understand it. I, I wouldn't understand what people are going through. But I do now, and um, there's this there's this passage where where Jesus was talking about um, the disciples. They had a they had a test of faith, and they were Jesus told them to cast out these spirits out of this little boy, and they couldn't. The spirit was too strong. And he says to them, O oh, faithless generation, how how long am I to be with you? How how long am I to bear with you? And our faith sometimes, man, we fall short, and, and God knows it. And I think God grieves that we man, God God could make a miracle happen right in front of our nose, and we would still struggle with faith. We would still struggle with believing. And that's evidenced by the dad of this little boy. He says, man, if, if you're able to do anything, please do it for my son. And, and Jesus is like, if? Can't, can't you do all things through faith? And the dad says, um, I believe, but help my own belief. That's where I'm at, man. That's my prayer for me. That's my prayer for y'all, that we can cry out to God. I believe, but help my own belief. And that's the Christian life. And that's what the road to Emmaus looks like. As we're trying to point everything back to Christ. Everything in all creation belongs to him. And is for him. Believe it. I really do.
but help my unbelief because because that screams at me sometimes so that's my episode so appreciate y'all being here with me uh please make sure to catch me next time if, if you're on podcast i love it man that, that so many people are tuning in thank y'all so much uh please tell folks about it post it out to your to your socials if y'all like it if you're over on youtube man thank y'all so much Oh man, thank you so much for tuning in on the daily. I'm, I'm doing daily, like little devotional kind of things over there. I'm putting up my old sermons. Um, when those run out, I'll probably end up doing just some, some sermon work. That'd be pretty cool. Uh, but thank you all for tuning in, man. And um, please make sure to like, share, subscribe, all of that stuff. I, I love interacting with y'all in the comments, so drop me a comment. I'll, I'll make sure to reach back out to you. Email me, man. I'm going to put my email in the description. I'd love to chop it up. Love to get some show ideas from y'all. But we're going to keep this thing going, man, to the glory of God. This thing is, is taking faith, too, that God is just going to use it as it will. And um, y'all are showing y'all's faith in me by tuning in and checking me out. So I love y'all and appreciate y'all. And I will catch y'all on the next episode for you on YouTube. I'll catch you next time. Until then, grace and peace.